Good evening. Seven, yeah, six thirty. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Phil Palumbo. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, Phil Palumbo, OPM on the senior center job and fire substation job. Uh, two items on the senior center project. I'm going to hand out. Um, this is an exterior rendering of the senior center building. When we got our site plan approval for the project back in November of last year, we were submitting on a shingle asphalt shingle roof type because that was the bylaw um, in the village center overlay district 19.2.7 and needed to be a shingle appearance but as of last fall that bylaw was altered um, and needing to be of shingle appearance is no longer so as part of the project we uh, altered the roof type to a metal standing seat metal roof type um, that gray color you see in the rendering is the gray color we're going to be going with so um, being a change to the site plan approval I wanted to present that to you guys tonight. Good. I like the shingles better, but that's what the town voted, so so be it. Cost differential. Um, so th this was an ad. This is a change order ad of 257k approximately. 257,000 more. Correct. Where's the money coming from? Bid savings. What do you mean bid savings? We had a bid savings on the project. The bids came in lower than expected. Yeah, I, just, yeah. I was told that you're over budget. Is that not true? That's not the senior center project. No. It's the library is. Yeah, okay. that's. I'll make a motion to amend site plan approval for the uh, senior center for the addition of a metal roof. Yeah, met, yeah metal roof. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? motion passes unanimously thank you uh, the last time on the senior center job part of the site plan approval for the sediment and erosion control inspections measures within that bylaw it indicates the final inspection shall include a full dated video inspection of all stormwater pipes installed I don't know if that was meant for projects that are reusing existing stormwater pipes on projects like this where it's a brand new stormwater system at the end of it, you want us to snake it with a camera? Yes, not, not the existing system. We want to do the, the new system. So we're installing a new stormwater system at the end of the project, snake it with a camera. Correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's just, just, just the new. Right. Yeah, because to just snake the old, I'm not sure. Well, we don't have any old on the senior side. It's a brand new system. Well, aren't you well, you're tying into the old system, aren't you? Well, the emergency overflow, yes, cuts yeah. across the library project and ties okay. to the street. But, but, but the underground system is all new. Correct. Yeah. So we are to video that. So I'm what's curious, we get a video. I'm just trying to, like, you, it's just, there's a lot of pipes to video. I just. I don't, I don't think we need every single pipe video. Okay. I think what we, what we want is a general idea of what the system looks like, you know. How many pipes are there? Probably uh, I don't know, but what I can do is what I'll I'll, hi, I'll mark up the uh, drainage plan and I'll send it to you, um, trying to show what we think what I think makes sense, and you can tell me. Okay. Yeah. What are we going to do with this when we get it? What for reference down the road? Let's say 20 years down the road, something's not right, not working right. You know what it looked like when it was new. Yeah. Now you know what it looks like today. I guess my question, in 20 years, how is somebody really going to find that video? Where's it going to be? Well, I'm going to, it's going to go to the town, so. Yeah, yeah that's, well, that's, that's yeah. my point. Yeah. It would be in the planning board files, and people are going to have to remember, you know, this is in the bylaw. Yeah. You know, we have a video of this. Right. Be in so, your files, well, right? so Phil? yeah, it will. But, yeah. but for something like that, I would I would drop box it to the DPW, so the DPW would have yeah, it. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, we got has, and, had so many studies done yeah, over the years. It's, it's know same, really there. And same with all like the ASBILTS and whatnot, and O and M manuals. They would go to the DPW. Right. So yeah. we are now connected to the town's server. Oh, that's right. This so be um, if we, anything we get in digital form. Can be uh, oh, saved, yeah. can be saved in a central location, right? Okay. Well, are there gutters on on the building? Yes. Yeah. So that's part of the stormwater system. So they all go down to underground pipes, which then connect to that main system centered on the parking lot. Okay. So I'll, I'll Jim, I'll send you a mark. Okay. That'd be good. Plan. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's that. And then fire substation. So that project got its um, site plan approval this past April. I've been trying to chase down getting this engineer certified letter signed off by the chair of the clerk. This is the letter indicating that um, everything within the site plan approval is in the contract ox. So they mailed that to you as well. So I don't know if this has already been done. This is the letter that one of you two just need to sign it. I, I have not signed this letter. Okay, okay thank you. And then I'll um, provide a copy to building and the town clerk will record it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Okay. So when's final? Well, when's it gonna be done with the uh, the senior center? No, the uh, fire station. Next summer. Next summer. Yeah. Who got the bid for the fire station? Um, that's uh, Kurtz Incorporated out of Westfield. Kurtz, K-U-R-T-Z. You well, said okay. the fire station. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They've been good. Okay. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Chris Sawicki. Again, the yes, we met two weeks ago, right? And you guys um, had the issues with the parking, wanted to verify that the parking met the code basically, the square footage allowance um, of parking lot by building. Um, so, I pulled out and I met with Berkshire Design Group, I did the original drawings on the building, and parking actually included in the zoning approval did include all the covered space. So that, that was already built into the original approval of the building spec. Okay. So the first page, I blew it up because I couldn't get a larger print of that zoning summary of lot one. But on the zoning summary, it does show how the building space times two has enough area per square footage. Okay. And that includes like the question about the outdoor seating. Okay. So. Now, the drive through window. So that's the other thing I did. A, sketch on is that what we're proposing is that we would create that's kind of a tight alleyway as it is for two-way traffic so what we're looking at proposing is to do it as a, as a single one way we could placard it and, and line it or whatever how wide is that alley it says 24 feet I think it's a little shallower than that when I measured it that's uh, that's 24 feet uh, one of the original prints showed as that amount. Here. Um, I kind of cleared it off on that one, but this okay. one, it's about 22 feet, I think, in that area. I think the original print said 24, but I don't think it actually came in at 24. I think it's a little shorter though. So what we're trying to say is I think a one-way one flow. Okay. I think a one-way flow would actually work better there too. Um, because two-way traffic would just be too tight as it is, even with or without the drive-through window. And it's not going to be a traditional drive through, it's just going to be pickup. We're looking at just having people pick up at that window, not a right. order. So they're going to drive through and around the back of the building, which is, what, no. Correct. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It is all This paved. is Russell Street. Well, I don't see where, where and how it huh? in the back. Where it what? Something. Wait a minute. No, I'm confused. The building is your building. Where's the Sorry, you know, <laughs> it's this one. Okay, I thought. Oh, yeah. this okay. So you oh. blew, there, you blew up the wrong so, side. Over well, here. no. What happened was there was there originally was two two of them, and okay. it broke it in half. So it basically showed all of them. Oh, okay, I'm gonna say because this yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> here's the original. Okay, here's it's the got 24 one. feet over here. Okay, yeah. now I got you. So the plans were broken in half, but now the, the current owner actually bought them back. So it's all one owner again. But that's how okay. it was in 2012 when the plan was approved for those two drawings in the parking. Has the back of the building been cleaned up? And I was right there, was it? It's all um, all paved. It's all cleaned up. There's no junk back there anymore. No. Okay. There's, there's that reserve parking area way in there. Yeah, that's okay. No, I'm yep. talking about behind there's a lot of oh, junk. Nope, it's all cleaned up. Okay. Nothing at all. Yep, it's all cleaned. Okay, so I was going to come in, go around, and then obviously exit out. Exit out. So 
Well, what what will be the route for the pickup? The pickup window? Yes. Driving in, going to the right side of the building, south side. Okay, you drive in here. Um, go. Or there's two entrances. You're going to go through the parking lot? Yeah, or you could come in that other entrance. This entrance here? Yes, correct, and go to the right side of the building. The that east. one's still there? Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's still there. Yep. yep. The east side. Yeah, right in front of... I know it was a nurse that lived there many, many years ago in that house. I don't know whose house it is. I think that house is currently owned by that house? Yeah. That is it's part of the same, same people. Oh, it is. They oh, you, oh, they bought the house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're renting it. Also, I didn't realize they were putting parking along the west property line. Is that right? This one. So yeah, you're no. uh, you're showing parking yeah. Yeah. on this uh, yeah. sheet yes. along the along westerly line. There's, there's space for it, yes. And but people will have to cross your they'll be back you in drive through. More right. lane. Okay. I mean I would guess that's like more overflow parking. Most people are gonna park in front of the building. It doesn't seem to be on the other, the original site plans. Um, one of it shows it on different ones, but one of them it did have straight parking in there. I was just trying to get a measurement as far as having a road going around the building and angle parking. It was eventually shown on the uh, the original John. Okay. When do you want to try to open? By the end of the year. The goal. It's an internal study to you know, do the internal work. So. so the conclusion is that the patio that's going to be added, you're adding additional parking, or is no, there sufficient parking? The patio was already there, and it was already approved. The square footage meets the requirement. So the the existing parking was adequate. For the space, including the, including the patio. The patio was already taken into account in the parking calculations. So we're not adding the patio, we're just using okay. the floor patio. I'm wondering if it wouldn't be safer if the southern four or five spaces weren't taken out and maybe put as parallel parking oh, right. yet, because you'd be backing out into that lane. I, I think there's plenty of parking, um, there's plenty of space, so we could probably make it out however would be the best. Well, do, you, do you need that to fulfill the two-for-one requirement? It's included in everything. That's the, that area, square footage area is in there. But you need it to fulfill the requirement. Yes, yes. But do you really need it? <laughs> No, so you wouldn't necessarily have to make it pave it and just. It's well, it's already paved. Right. It's already paved. Okay. But you yeah. don't have to stripe it. We don't have to stripe it if need be. Right. Correct. That so might you're, be you're, the simpler solution, just not stripe yeah, it. Stripe is fine. Yeah. <clears throat> you're going to. This will be both a bakery and a restaurant. Correct. Okay. Yeah, there's no stripes there now, um, and the owner is looking to do that so we could alter it to not do that and just have them in front. If you were going to stripe, I would only stripe the northern eight where there's adequate backup space. And then that would actually leave that open to All right. Yeah, the side part is our busiest time will probably be weekend and the entire other side of the, the other building is not there. Um, are you anticipating that you will paint that lane because I think that would be good to guide <coughs> people through. We could do that in lieu of putting parking spaces there. If you Correct. painted that, you know, yeah. that line. And that's not, yeah, that's perfectly fine. I think the more you guide people, the safer you are. Yeah, sure. We agree. So the fact that you're converting it to a restaurant, will you have to pay an additional impact sewer hookup fee? Do you find it reasonable, high? It's expensive. 
It's expensive. Hmm? It's expensive. There's an ulterior motive to this question. I understand mm. that. I'm more interested in, the, in, in this big reach cap, please. No, because we've had people complain before that the sewer impact fee it is in Hadley is very high. It's, it is very, we didn't have one in East Hampton. Okay. Um, it seems high. I mean, we're walking in, but I understand there's a cost of doing business, so. If you want to lower it, I'm okay with that. And we, we have no authority we, on that. No jurisdiction. <laughs> so no, it's still my job. Okay. So what do they Dan and Bagel has requested a waiver of site plan approval for conversion of the existing building at 191 Russell Street into a bakery restaurant with drive up pickup window and outdoor seating at existing patio. Is it within our purview to review you know, signage, you know, one way, do not enter, or um, drive up window, or is that, or just someone else? Review that. We would review. We would review yeah. that. Yeah. So if it's uh, it would be under a directional sign, so yeah. it could be yeah. in addition yeah. to, and mm -hmm. they yeah. would bring it to us for a review. So this is basically both wholesale and retail, correct? Correct. Yes. So how are you going to separate the retail from the wholesale when you sell something? Uh, selling well, usually the shipments of wholesale. I mean, wholesale. We deliver. Okay. So it's in our delivery truck. So everything you're going to do here is retail, which is going to be subject to the meals tax. Yep. Do you have an additional one on top of the 675 in Hadley? Yes, we do have a local meals tax. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we do, and I haven't looked into it yet, but we yeah. do. We have a quarter point in, in Northampton and East Hampton as well. Yeah. So yeah, that's fine. That will be subject to the most of the revenue will be well, retail. The retail subject to it, not the whole exactly. stack. Right. Yeah. So the retail is all subject to it. That's all built in. Okay, I'll make it. I'll make an, make an addition to that. With drive up, drive th appropriate pick up lane to be to be appropriate striped. Yeah, I just think the more signage and signage. striping that we provide, because otherwise it's wide open, kind of or, yeah. Yeah. wild west, and you can get people going different directions and one way at. It's a one way at pickup window. At pickup lane. Okay. So the motion is to way for the way further site plan approval for conversion of the building of one ninety one Russell Street into a bakery restaurant with drive up pickup window and outdoor seating at existing patio with appropriate signage for one way at pickup lane. So moved. Second. 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 Um, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. You might want to pick your wording on that sign, like pre-order pickup sign, so everyone's not going, oh, do I order right. here? There's no, there'll be no ordering there. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, ordering yeah, there. Yeah. Right, so when they Same see that there's that. a pickup window, they want to say, oh, do I order there too? So you might want to say pre-ordered We'll work on signs yeah. in the back here. Mm. That's fine. Yeah, we don't want to do the whole thing, so we're just going to have online ordering all online. Some people might go in and get it too. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. You need that one, Joe? You need this stuff. No. Thank you. Pull that record. Um, Dave Eisenberg. No, I'm sorry. Inberg. That's me. Inberg. I am. E. You got a lot of her shit design project here. So this, this is a. Uh, in A and R for the central uh, center. Oh, this is the land they were going to buy. Right. I made some copies here. Pass around. So you know, get this to Joe so we can sign it. They don't need to sign it. They need to sign it. They need to sign it. Oh, no. This piece from um, Jeffrey, and um, I 
this is the remaining lot. This is what's going to remain, and this is parcel A is what they want to create there. So where is this? In the rock gym. That's the rock climbing oh, gym. Rock climbing gym. Okay. And, and the basic question here is pre-existing non-conforming use and the they want to make it non-conforming more by purchasing some yeah, land. This, this line here is an existing line. We're not changing that. So that's why we didn't show an offset. Cause this is probably a non-conforming use. I mean, existing use. But we did show offsets to the division line. So line. you're looking to purchase, what is it? Or no, I mean, I'm not purchasing it. I'm, <laughs> I'm the survey manager. They want to, they want to buy so, land. So this lot is. It's an L-shaped lot, right. gonna, and this is where the rock gym is. No, the rock gym's down here. Okay, this is someone else's. That's uh, the veterinary hospital. Pet, that's, oh, that's the pet, pet, oh, pet hospital. Hotel. Oh, okay, okay, pet pet hotel. Pet okay, hotel. vertical assets. Right. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is the parcel looking to purchase ultimately. Correct. So while this is a non-conforming lot, it is no more non-conforming because it has shed this piece. It's not giving up any frontage, it's not giving up any setbacks. Um, the question was, no, what's no, the... No, wait a minute, this, this lot is 30,000 square feet? Yes. This whole lot? Yes. This is in the aquifer, I believe. That was the question. And we weren't sure, and somebody was supposed to... Yeah, so somebody had... Works your design because they have the they have the map for that. Let's uh, okay. have anything go. I That's believe this is the map. I believe. I was on the feet. I, I thought that. Wow. Okay. So this is East Street. This is Route 9, right? Right here is Route 9. This is River Drive, which is way over here. This is East Street. East Street is over here someplace. Correct. No, down here. Over here. It's yes, over here someplace. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Right. No. East yes. Street's over there. Yes, that's what I said. Yeah. East Street's over oh, here. Oh, okay. yeah, on, on my map, on my map, yeah. not your okay. map. My map, East, East Street's over here, right? Yes. Someplace. Yeah. Someplace. This is Maple Ave right here, which is down here. River Drive is over here. This is very difficult to discern on this little map. Let me see if we can get our neighbor back up from that bottom of the office. We'll probably, we'll probably hire a geologist to have move that aquifer up uh, line 200 feet either way. Yeah. I thought that this, this um, line back here was the end of the, this the zone in here, and this was agriculture back here. But the aquifer protection overlay district right. is an overlay district. Right, right. So, um, so let's see if we can. You looking? See if I can bring up the assessor's database. Mm -hmm. Become part of the rock gym property. Yes. And is that part of their of their reserve parking, or is it just 
I think that's what they want to do is expand parking okay. and maybe put an outbuilding in there. They have a for that. We can't tell where we have been Okay, this is the aquifer. This is okay. Here's the uh, this is the assessor's database okay. with the zoning map spread over it. So it looks like it's there. It's right. the L-shaped lot. I was going to say it looks like it's, it's so it looks like it's, it's not in it. Part of the aquifer is over here. Right, you're, you're it's, on, it's on that the big the big parcel to slicing out. Could you explain the significance of whether it is or it's not? If it's, if it's in the aquifer, they need forty thousand square feet of building lot. Okay. If it's not in the aquifer, thirty thousand. Okay. And so it looks like Bill says I, from this up here and what he's got, this is in the aquifer. That's not a, that's irrelevant. This is the piece we're wondering about. Yeah. Okay. Good. Just check it to make sure. That's called a planning board survey. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good find, Bill. That's uh, well. When they added the overlay, you can actually apply because even that's not perfect. Okay. But you can yeah. Uh, really? You can apply it to individual lot sizes. All right. So we are good to sign this, right? Well, you want to sign the model. Or? We want to sign all the. We want to no. sign. Well, you can do whatever we, we, you want. We sign all oh, the blueprints. Okay, okay that's fine. And the mylar with a with a magic okay. marker. Every time, yeah. every time is different. Because uh, normally, different. different people want copies of these. We the town wants two copies. Yep. And then you get the rest and your mylar back signed. Okay. We make you the conveyor belt. Yes. And this one down the mark down there. Okay. I think you're running low on ink on this one, Jim. So you want to keep two of those? Correct. I got, I got my two right here, the rest of yours. And do you know what the fee is going to be? I will. Okay. Wait a minute. Yep. You got another pen, Jim, or? That one's running out. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Like yeah. I think yeah. the tip got a, got some damage. You yeah. to the guys down there. Oh. Awesome. Yeah. 
feel a little wobble. Hey. That's gonna be the minimum. Bring them all to the collector, or to the town clerk with your check. She stamps it paid and puts one copy in our box. I've done this in Hanover before. <laughs> Jeff was going to be here first floor. We got to go to West Springfield. So, are you guys busy? Oh, yeah. Well, we were. I mean, the survey was very, very busy all since January up right through the middle of July. It's missed off a little bit now, but it's not. The gauge of the, give us a gauge of the Western Mass economy. Is it accelerating? Is it level? Mm -hmm. is it? Well, what happens is that the state puts out all their contracts, fisheries and wildlife, agricultural uh, resources, DCR, they all put out their contracts the first of the year, or their proposal the first of the year. Mm -hmm. and we bid on a bunch of those. But they all got to be done by the end of June when their fiscal year ends. So we're really busy with those. We just yeah. actually get to hit one of them and flag it out in Wendell. But yeah, we're, we're still really busy. There is a business cycle, whether Jim or Bill was pointing it out, that we see it. The uh, We do get a rush. Yeah. But uh, for next year, actually. Well, um, hopefully, uh, keep it going for this fall. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Joe Sikoski. This, this is almost more of a social call. Um, we like social calls. Well, you had a, I heard you had a quiet night here, that's why I said. Um, there was quite a flap last year with the decision on whether or not farmers would be allowed to grow crops that were recently made legal. Um, and in that year, we've learned a lot. There's probably 50 or 60 acres of hemp in Hadley now, and it's the same exact plant as what we were talking about then. There haven't been any complaints about smell or odor, and that was really the main flap with the whole thing. Um, I'd like to invite anybody who wants to take a, a ride out to one of the fields to take a sniff. It, it's funny, you, you, you can't really smell it until you're almost on top of the plants. Where, where you, can you tell us, what, what, yeah, do you want to be on TV to say where the fields are or not? Well, it's, it's hemp. I mean, it's hemp. There's, there's, oh, no, yeah, so. there's no. There's no. Yeah. There's, there's, there's I, no. I, I guarantee you, there's not a single rogue plant in the field because well, there's they, no THC. Yeah. They already yeah. sampled it. Yeah. Um, there's no THC. Um, this is medicine we're talking about. Uh, CBD oil. Um, the fields are amazingly benign. They smell more like a tomato field than a tomato field. Um, is how I would describe it. You have to be just a few feet away to smell it. Um, and it smells almost like having a cup of tea in the kitchen. It's 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 not it's not a big thing. It's not skunks and where where, where are some of these fields? Okay, one of them would be behind my house on off Shattuck. Okay, one of them would be across from North Hadley Pond um, on, on Glen Clark's. I don't see why I couldn't say that on TV. Okay, I don't know how many viewers you have. Oh, that's fine. I mean, it, it, it sweeps week or whatever this is, but. Um, and I, I won't mention some of the other fields because they belong to other people. Okay. Um, and they might not like people sniffing. Oh yeah, I understand that. But those are two. I. What's I think I'm not here to say I told you so or anything like that. 
But a decision made with demonstrably false information might deserve a second look. Well, well, well we, we fully admitted we were dealing with the unknown, and we're trying to be conservative. And we were waiting for this year to come around because there was a lot of different products being grown. And with a year under our belt, and be, is, is it in its, is it in its uh, peak? It's already dying back. Oh, it is, okay. For its harvest. It's been what? in bud for th two or three weeks. What, what do you have there, Joe? Well, I have a ragweed and a, a branch from a hemp thing. To, I mean, it's been in the room but for a hemp, while. Hemp is he's talking about hemp. hemp. We were talking about marijuana. Right. So, but, but it's the same exact plant. It's the, only, the only difference is the THC level is Well, different. evidently that may be the stuff that's well, no, 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 we, we, oh. well, the yeah. point is, <clears throat> we don't have any experience. We really have, we have, obviously have some experience with hemp. We don't have any experience with a tier one growth facility. Right. I think what we need to do to break through is get someone to put up a good quality, bylaw compliant tier one, and Which what a five thousand foot. Yes, yeah. even finding somebody that's growing it doesn't have to be even a five thousand square foot. Find somebody that's growing marijuana, be it in a greenhouse or otherwise, where we can go and smell. I don't care if it's a ten thousand, a fifty thousand, a seventy thousand, a five thousand, but find out, you know. Like you said, <coughs> these are all kinds of horror stories. What's the real truth? Exactly. So I think that what's going to satisfy, but all then we can do is make a recommendation, proposal at town meeting. That's I, right. And I think what we need to satisfy town meeting is some field experience with. I've told you where the fields are. Well, yeah. no, I mean with an operational yeah. uh, growth site. Is anybody yeah. growing marijuana outside in Western Mass in the fields? Honestly, not that I know of. I mean, yeah. I could make some Worcester, guesses. Worcester. <laughs> well, no, we're, we're, we're talking not, not 20 plants, but we're, we're talking a large amount. And the big, and this is, I'm going to tell you what I've heard from, from uh, big corporation. You know my brother Rick? Yes. He works for, directly for a marijuana grower in the Midwest, in Ohio. It's a national chain, I forgot the name of the company. Um, and he is, he, part of his job is to design, help design different topic, topical ointments and everything else for CBD. But he also does stuff for regular THC stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, he was saying that they, they're a big company and everything that they grow for, for a THC point of view is undercover for a number of reasons. One is to control the uh, the TA, not so much to control the THC, but to control the bugs and the mold and the mildew and everything else that can happen with this stuff because it's very susceptible to various fungus, fungical diseases and everything else. What is the farmer's opinion of that statement? You know, um, we haven't had any problem with powdery and downy mildew and I thought we would. But it's been a nice, it's been a kind couple of months lately. Well, this, 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 uh, is a, this is a great growing year. Yeah, I think last, if it was last year, we'd be looking at something different. And if that hurricane came up, it would oh, yeah. whacked yeah. us. So yeah. we'd be looking and at something I, different. And I, 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 I think what he was aiming at was they grow 24-7, 365. And to get the production out, they grow everything indoors because of the issues of well, what if it gets hit with a last year versus this year, which is a great, I mean, we're going to admit it's a great growing year. Um, but I don't. I don't think we want it, to tell it, pharma how to grow this stuff. Let them take whatever risk they want. Well, no, 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 I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just saying we were dealing with the unknown. Sure. And if a farmer's willing to take, it's like growing tobacco. You're taking on a big risk. Last year was if you harvested it before middle of July, you got a great crop. If it was after the middle of July, you were harvesting wet leaves. Enough said. I'm not. I don't disagree that we don't want to tell a farmer how to grow. And that's not the intent here. We want to know, we want to deal with what we know with. And if this old, biggest concern was odor. If the stuff really doesn't smell that bad for a big area, then let them grow some outside, is my opinion. And that's all that we want to, that's all we want to make a decision yep. on. Does it smell as bad as they say? Or, like Joe says, you're going to be practically on top of it. So, so Joe, the 
People believe that marijuana smells different than hemp. Are you telling us it doesn't? It's the same plant, and from what I understand. But, but it's not the same plant because you've got a higher concentration of THC in the marijuana plant. Yeah, I don't think the THC is the smelly stuff. Okay. It's uh, the aroma part. Okay. Um, so let, let me ask you a question. If Let's say I had a squash storage that was empty after the middle of July. I mean, at the middle of January. Um, if I followed all the, and let's say it happened to be a 5,000 foot square foot building with no houses around, um, and I complied with all the, the security things that the town, I mean that the state mandates, um, what would be the planning board's role in taking that squash storage and raising one cycle, one crop cycle in there? It would just be going to the process that's in the, in the bylaw. and. You know, the biggest, ex I mean, the expense from our point of view is going to be an application fee and stuff like that, which is, you know, small. It's the security measures that the state mandates that'll probably run you into some serious money. And then there would be a public hearing, and uh, people, butters and a butters to a butters within 300 feet of the property are notified. So, a group of people would probably show up My sisters. Uh, <laughs> to, no, to uh, express their opinions. Yeah. Right. And this time we have the bylaw as our foundation. And if you comply with the bylaw, don't exceed the requirement, don't exceed the grow requirements, have met all of the specific requirements the town meeting adopted then you would likely get approved for experimental, for, for a, um, a tier one growth. Yeah. And and nobody has tried this in town. No, nobody has applied for anything <coughs> in town for anything. I mean, even the cell facilities, the only one we've got is the old Sunoco station down the road that's, what is it called now? Uh, Happy Valley, Com Happy, no, Happy no, Valley no. Compassion Center or something, something like that. But, and they're only approved for medical marijuana. Are they open? I don't think I so. I don't think so. It looks like they're getting close. And they're presumptively going to seek um, adult, use. adult use. But we have, we're going to have to take a close look at the, part, at the traffic flow for is, adult is there, use. Is there any rule that asks for local in anything in the state or in the town? No, no. It doesn't really matter. No, there's no, no CISA for this stuff. No, uh, no. We we can't express a uh, preference for. Um, we can't limit something to to local, local only. But through, and you were participating in a lot of the process. We were actually kind of surprised that there was so much interest on the grow side and so little interest expressed by anyone on the selling side. on the sales on the retail side yeah. no one seemed concerned about it and no one was even here to ask us about it uh, like they wanted to open something um, there there is a state I think local requirement on dispensaries that you can't own more than a certain number of dispensaries correct yeah yeah but from the article that the Boston Globe put out earlier this year, there are people finding ways around that with shell companies and that, that own and Yeah, I mean, there, there's obviously, if you know how to finagle yeah. um, sub-companies or whatever you want to call yeah. it, there's, there's a way around it. Well, would but, you go, excuse me. Yeah, but you know, we don't even, like I said, we said all we have is that one medical <coughs> where the old Sunoco station is, and I believe they're close. I mean, I would have thought they'd be trying to get open for the first of the uh, students coming in because they really, this year, they really did a lot of work there to, 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 to that clean the place in, up. That one in North Amherst hasn't been obtrusive in any way. No, no, no. I mean, I go by it every day. When they first opened, they had the, the cop there, <laughs> the crossing <laughs> guard. The policeman sitting at one six. BY or BY? <laughs> the policeman <laughs> sitting at the uh, um, intersection of 116 for, for a while. And then they decided to pull him back or her back, and they says when the students come back, they were going to put him back there. He was the, the, the policeman was the, the car was there for one day, and it hasn't been there since since the students have come back. It was there on Saturday, <coughs> okay, two days because it was there last 
Friday, I think, or Thursday. Uh, and then it wasn't, hasn't been out been there again. So, Joe, I'll give you an example. We adopted the senior housing overlay like five years ago, six years ago. And there was a lot of interest at the time, but none of those people came back after we adopted it. And Barry Roberts, a couple of years ago, started working on it, and he put a lot of effort into it in that project on East Street. And as we went through the bylaw with him, he would say, you know, look, guys, we really can't make this work. Um, what it says here doesn't conflict with what it says here. And so, yeah, we looked at it. You're right. So we, we amended the bylaw a couple of times to reflect the fact that when we put the bylaw in, we didn't have any experience with senior housing. And it took a couple of years before someone came forward. And then we walked through it and found where the dead ends were. And, but that's what we need to, you know, we now have on senior housing, we have some information that we next, we might talk about doing some amendments to the bylaw, tinkering with it. Same thing's going to happen with uh, the cannabis cultivation. We, we need, we need someone we need someone to help to, step in to go through it. The, it yeah, to go through it the would first you, time would with you us. Grow it outside if you could grow it outside. Well, the sun is shining for free most days. It seems like a nice thing, um, rather than putting a roof over and then putting lights on underneath and yeah. have the roof block the light and then have the lights on. Seems goofy, but uh, well, the goofy part. The goofy part, you may feel everything is in your favor, it's your land, you can do what you want to do, but my speech I give all the time is there's a delicate balance between the rights of the individual landowner and the rights of the community. And the community, i.e. the neighbors, are the people that are going to be voting for it at the town meeting. As you recall, the planning board first came up with a, a the two acre minimum, farmers could grow it in the open field. And uh, certainly the neighbors were Did, not in favor of it. There, hmm? Could I have Could I see that? Yeah, hand? but okay, it's been in the room for a while. That's, That's okay. To show you that it smells about the same like the ragweed. But the thing is, it's been sitting there for a while. You couldn't, you can't smell it where you are. Okay. But if well, you put no. your nose right into it, you can smell it. But for some reason, if you're even two feet away, you can't smell it. Yeah, yeah but that doesn't stink. No, and it, it, it's, I would say it's a little bit like a tomato. Well, there certainly is. I, mean, I think you're right. It smells a lot like the ragweed. It smells like the ragweed is just about, yeah. Just yeah. about the same. Yeah, you're, you're you right. Know, um, is that ready to harvest? Um, maybe in about two weeks, three weeks. Yeah. The plants are already beginning to senesce, they're beginning to die back. Pass, pass it down. I've never smelled nor partake. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Mr. Aldrich. It certainly, it certainly doesn't smell like a, a nasty, a, a bad smell. It smells uh, like a salad bar. Or a salad bar, yeah. <laughs> the lawn after it. Yeah. Well, this is the kind of due diligence we should be doing rather than somebody telling us. You know, I wish this decision had been made a year later because I think there's, there's, a, there's probably three or four hundred acres of hemp in the valley, which is the same exact plant with a lower THC level. And, you know, it's not causing any flap. Um, if we had known then what we know now, where eight and a quarter acres don't smell at all, the people were saying that you know an acre would make it so they couldn't sell their house, it's just now demonstrably false. Well, democracy yeah. is slow. Well, well, the other thing is, if people are saying that you know hemp that stinks, well, I mean obviously odor is in the is in the nose of the beholder, but there's a big difference between smelling like a skunk and smelling like a weed. All right. And and you made a good point to the person from uh, uh, Worcester. Remember the industrial park yeah. area that they're growing that yeah. in? In fact, they invited us. Do you remember the name we should go? Yeah, I got the name of the lady. Okay. And I gave her my name and my phone number. And I said, give me a call. Yeah. They only grow medical marijuana. Now, state law under medical says you can't have visitors. Uh, if it's a medical facility for some reason but she really, was mentioning but they only at the time they were only growing medical because they grew medical and they sold it as medical they didn't grow adult use and under the law 
if you have a medical grow facility, you can't have visitors. Only the people that work in it are supposed to be allowed to enter it. That was before the adult use was passed. Now it's a whole different set of scenarios where I can't imagine you can't have visitors walking through an adult, I mean, a, a regular facility. Doesn't GTI have a place in Holyoke, right yes. in the city? Yeah. With some charcoal but, filters? But yeah. they were mentioning the, the fact that some of it does smell almost like skunk, and then some of it smells like strawberries. There's yeah. different varieties, so. Yeah. That that uh, is true. Yeah, yeah not, but so. you, you don't have to. You don't have to plant the skunks. Yeah. Well, the thing is, when uh, you had that meeting with the neighbors, the uh, and now they're sitting over. I can smell that stuff over here. Yeah. Okay, but it doesn't stink. Is, is all the point I'm trying to get at? That doesn't smell bad. It smells literally like, like it's a weed. It smells like the ragweed or something like that. Like a plant. Yeah, it's it's not a it's yeah. not a bad smell. Is a point I want to get across on. But the so. commissioner of agriculture was there, and he said one thing we cannot quantify is smell. I mean, right. we can measure light, we can measure sound, but we cannot quantify smell. So, yeah. so but yeah. you know, so what's that's going to be? Well, we're going to between yeah. now and not necessarily. I don't think probably yeah. between annual town meeting. Um, really want to. Uh, get some real good information on this and try to find some place that's growing just pure marijuana, THC Any style. towns around you are looking for some land in Hatfield Whateley until they told you to go back to Hadley, but uh, <laughs> the are there anybody growing it out oh, there? Yap has a permit to grow. I don't know if he's growing yet. Um, okay. Deerfield, there's, there's, a, there's a few. Um, and his is going to be in greenhouses. Be are they of, putting up the greenhouses? Yeah. Are they starting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's pretty far along. And I think Happy Valley might have sold some property at, um, can't think of, not, not far from the castaways. Um, yeah. Oh, right down Waitley over there? I think that's... Where, where the big greenhouses already are, or, or new greenhouses? It's going to be new. There's, there's going to be new one next to Melnick Farm. I there's some the big greenhouses right yeah, on uh, just, just south. Is it south? Yes, yeah, just south yeah. of the castaways. There's some big ones where you can see them right from 91. Well, I think that regardless of what's going on elsewhere, yeah. uh, unless we're going to start doing uh, bus trips from town meeting, no. we're, what we're going to need is a local operation that uh, will satisfy people that the odor can be controlled. You know, I, I'd like to find an easier way to make a living as a farmer. Last year in the country, 55% of the farmers lost money. I mean, our valley looks pretty good this summer. It really does. But there's been a lot of difficult legislation. For instance, farmers have to pay overtime now. That changes the numbers significantly. Mm. You know what I mean? Nobody's going to pay us once and a half for our crop. So to find a better way, an easier way as I get older to make a living would not be a, something I'd, be, I'd argue against. And I hope you wouldn't either. So you're no? saying you want to grow it in this? In this you know, I, I look into what the cost course. might be. Because, I mean, I've got the building, I've got the three-phase power in there. The storage is empty from middle of January on. Where is it located? Right behind my processing building. We have security cameras. We have everything already. 300, 300 feet away from other neighbors? Oh, probably 900 feet away. It might not be. Let me see how much it would cost to try it. Yeah. I've got how, much, how much tobacco did you raise this year, Joe? About 12 acres. Oh, it's all I thought you had more than that. Okay. My brother is a bigger farmer. Oh, bigger than that? Not as big as Dave uh, McCretzky and so Okay, but, but, but there, it was a beautiful tobacco crop. Oh, it was. What, do you, Havana or, or? Broadly. Broadly. And it smells so nice in the barns. <laughs> the neighbors should pay me. <laughs> <laughs> smells like victory, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I, I think, you know, I'm not mad or bitter, and it was actually interesting to see how democracy really works, even though it's sometimes it's kind of ugly to see. Um, but it did work, but I think the information was erroneous. Well, you know, maybe, but at the same time, uh, tobacco is clearly an agricultural product. The drying tobacco does not necessarily smell good to everyone. Um, but nobody can say anything about it because it's agriculturally exempt. So part of it was probably a frustration with people who 
may have had to put up with more odors than they anticipated from active farming operations. Hadley's a right to farm town. So, you know, some things, uh, you go shopping at uh, Mountain Farms Mall, sometimes you have to deal with the Allard's Lagoon. Um, That's why it's called the Farms Mall. Uh, <laughs> Area. And you, you live in certain locations, you have to deal with the smell of uh, drying tobacco from next place. So part of it, I think, was a reaction to, here's something we, we can draw a line here. We don't have to take this. Um, I think that was part of it. Part of it was uh, dis misinformation or uh, exaggerated information. And apparently, yeah, I did, did some reading on it that apparently there are some strains that do have strong odors, but I don't know whether people plant those because they have uh, more kick or whether um, they do it to annoy their neighbors. For that. Is, is hemp an agricultural product or not? Yes, it is now. It is now? It is now. As a matter of fact, the state legislature came down to that field behind my house for a, a meeting and they wanted to see it and they, they haven't written all the rules. I have one customer. For the, the cut items we do, he wanted to sell, you know, hemp leaves for hemp mojitos and stuff. He does so at Stadium and other places, and and hemp to go in salads and all this other stuff and hemp smoothies, and we can't do any of that stuff. Do you grow any hops in town? No, but uh, I have a, a friend who raises some in uh, Amherst, and uh, can that can that hops be used to make an alcoholic beverage? I think it helps flavor it. Okay. Um, but anyways, I just. I, I don't want to keep no, you up no. late, and I want to check your kids. I think part, I think part of the concern was legitimate concern for families that they didn't want their younger children exposed to a marijuana field, for what, for good, you know, good reason. Because it's, it's been shown that marijuana severely can retard a children's mental and brain growth in the in the years of you know, ten to fifteen, ten to sixteen. And so there are these concerns, but yeah, but that's not our, we're not we're not what, the medical doctors. Either. But marijuana had the THC in field run product is I don't want to say not unharm is the the THC kick is just about very low in field run tobacco and field run marijuana. To get the THC out of marijuana, you need to heat it above 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So if people are eating and consuming raw marijuana, yeah, I guess if you ate enough of it, it might affect you. But if you cook it or bake it or smoke it, that's where the kick gets out of it. That's where the THC comes out of it. That's what I heard from people that are so supposedly experts in the THC field. Hadley was famous for broom corn and onions and asparagus and things change. And back then nobody could really stop somebody from planting onions if the broom corn market was bad. But I mean, now we, we're being regulated more, but I think we should just invite you to take a sniff test and see that it's not the devil in a bucket, Yeah. you know? And maybe we could take a look at this. If you want to do a site plan approval on this facility, you, got, you should start working now and not December 31st, okay? Start putting some numbers together and see if it's going to work. I think that's not a bad idea. Yeah. And I, you know, I should check with the neighbors ahead of time, so there's no uh, lynching or anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know? so, so you understand the system. Um, if you file for a special permit for a grow site, um, when, when you file a complete application, it's going to take us roughly a month to schedule a public hearing because we have to send out legal notices to abutters and add in the newspaper. Assuming you probably wouldn't get um, a decision at that first hearing, depending on a lot of factors, like how detailed your plans are, how much concern abutters raise. So we'll probably go into a second session. So that's another month. And then uh, it takes me a while to write up a decision. And then there's a 20-day appeal period on the decision. So assuming no one appeals, you should budget, budget 90 days before you can apply for a building permit to 
well, you can actually apply for a building permit and proceed at your own risk, but you know, allow for 90 days between um, applying and planting your first crop. So applying for a building permit would cover like lights and security? Yes. 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 So you could, as soon as you got approval from us for the appeal period, this is the same thing that's happening up at uh, North Hadley Garage, uh, that has been appealed, but he's proceeding at his own risk. So, but he can't actually move cars onto the site until and it's who can decided. appeal, only the neighbors or in, 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 in a, an aggrieved party? Is the way the law is written so typically anybody within 300 feet if they're an aggrieved party but but they have to prove that they have an adverse impact that's unique to them right uh, so just being in a butter doesn't give them standing it gives them what's called presumption of standing but 300 feet from the boundary line of the property or yes. 300 feet from the project or the boundary line of your property or any abutter within 300 feet of the boundary line of your property. That's the notice requirement for a special yeah, permit. Yes. That's different than the setback requirements. Right. That's different. That's different. That's just public notice. That people that get would, know, would get notice in a potentially an aggrieved party. Your 300 feet is from the building, not from the. Depending on what you're looking at, it's, it may not be from the actual boundary of the building so of the not, property. Not to say that you couldn't reserve your property. So much to learn. Mm -hmm. Every time, every time, I hope to know something. Okay. okay. Thanks, well, for thank thanks, for, thanks, thanks for thanks for bringing that in, Joe. Play. That's no, why you retired. There's nothing there uh, to learn. Uh, yeah. I'll get back to you. Okay. Thank okay. You. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody have a chance to look at the definitions that uh, were distributed and that? Um, mm -hmm. Ken has put together for us. So the, the existing definitions, I think we'll probably just stick with. Yes. Um, I was a little unclear on his comments, uh, on his template, about whether the um, definitions he was leaving in but are, are ones he's recommending for us? Yes. Everything okay. that has a line through it, we don't have words in our, excuse me, in our zone bylaw. So he said we should, you know, for the time being, take those out. Okay. Now, I, I, don't, I don't know if it was Mike or Mark that said um, under adult uses in various sections where he called building related terms, we should put the section of the bylaw that that comes from because I'm going through this myself and I was like that would be help that would be very helpful to include um, the section where building related terms comes out of uh, auto related terms or adult uses okay mm -hmm. so now anybody have okay the parking the parking one, uh, you know, where we say we, we will count patios, etc. Does that follow our bylaw? I thought it did not. I hadn't left my copy at well, all. So supposedly, where we have unique stuff, he's pulled this right out of our zoning bylaw. Okay, but so where, where we have a term that's not defined, then he's put a definition in. Okay, okay the parking, the parking, uh, what we count. Okay, R wait a minute. Let's not jump around. Let's go over page by page so that we can go through and I don't want to go all over the place if we can avoid it. Um, front, the first page, section 20 definitions. With the one that has adult uses. Anybody have any comments on that one? Which was, you're on the template. I'm on the template. Okay. Because there's two different, this one and this one, these are both different, it seems like this one continues into this one. But, because these don't appear over in this one. Okay. And so, yeah, because he jumped these in sequence and. 
Right. Okay. Okay. So, just to be clear, by we're going to have one definition section. That's what we're shooting for. But it's not everything is A to Z. It's going to be like he's got it. It'll be in you know, it all be in one section, but there'll be subsections for the different applications. Right. For the different sections of the right. where, where the where the definitions right. fall into a unique section <laughs> of the bylaw, there will be a unique section for that definition. Right. So you go to whatever it was, one B, and then it'll be one B, one two three. You know, based on right whether it's yep. so if you go to marijuana or it's <coughs> senior housing. Or it's if you go to solar, yeah. all of the solar definitions will be in alphabetical order under. The, the heading solar. Right. Um, like so that. you won't have to be flipping through the definitions yeah. to find, especially if we, we use slightly, you know, something could be under A and something could be under W yeah. and they're adjacent terms in the solar bylaw. Yeah. So it does, I think it does make sense to do it, to group it this way. Yeah, yeah. I like that. At first I was afraid of everything was just thrown in a to Z. No, no, no. Just, it'll be it'll be grouped. This is good. Which if you know if you go to Springfield, Holyoke, Northampton, even it is. Yeah. And uh, it's it, all grouped in. It's in like an alphabetical order. Yeah. And it, depending on how it, of course, you know they, you got to look through different things. I mean, there's pluses and minuses of using it either way. Mm -hmm. But um, like if you're in a their, their solar section, that they have one. Then you're going to search all through the through the definitions. For here, we're going to have them in one small group. So you know you, you can. I, I kind of like it in the groups myself. Okay. Yeah. So, but now the question is that again, I wasn't clear if he was sort of adapting this, but apparently not because our adult uses related terms. And the ones that are set off here in color yeah. are different. Oh, I see what you're saying. These are taken right out of our zone bylaw. Yes. This is a template. Right. right. So these don't necessarily mean that we're going to change the definition. No. No. Okay. So but this, this now. But the question was then, uh, from the template, is there anything that we'd like to include? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I didn't, because this was all, because the one with the blue highlighting was all taken right from the zoning bylaw, mm -hmm. that's, that's I didn't really look at it much, because this is just pulled right out of our book. Right. Mm -hmm. I was looking at these definitions, assuming that we would be using some of these. My comment was that we don't want to use these template definitions if, in fact, it changes the nuance or the meaning of our bylaw. I exactly agree right. with you. I, I, I didn't realize yeah. that adult use here was also in this one, but these had different definitions. Because yeah. I made some comments on his stuff, assuming that we were going to be adopting it. Um, that makes a big difference because we don't want to change our definition. Like even in building height, we says we don't want to go to the mean. But we don't have any other definition of it. Right. No, so. I, I agree. So, what we really need from Ken is a put together definition so that we can comment on it. Because otherwise, we have conflicting definitions. Like he's got automobile repair shop. Mm -hmm. I made a comment about it, and it's his definition in establishment garage or work areas enclosed within a building for the servicing and repair of motor vehicle but not in 
and, but not including installing new parts or accessories, et cetera, et cetera, a whole bunch of stuff on what you can install. And my comment here is, what if it is not in a building? We've got people that do repairs outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Yeah, you, you change the tire outside of a garage? I've, I've changed wiper blades in the Walmart parking lot several times. Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, uh, how about agricultural exemption? Agricultural, that's, that's different. Agricultural is exempt from repairs. That's under agricultural exemption. It is? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You're, so you're, somebody you're, could be running a garage repairing only tractors. So maybe we need to clarify. Um, I know we're going to try to get this to him. We're not going to get it to him. I will, we can't. Because these conflict with these in some cases, and so we don't know what we're adopting out of here. Mm -hmm. But to your point, Dr. Zagrodnik, remember blades, lawnmowers on Middle Street? Remember we allowed them to repair other lawnmowers, not necessarily theirs, because they had the agricultural exemption? Something? Remember that? Something well, it wasn't that? agricultural exemption. They used to, what was it? They used to have a. Uh, was farm shop. They used to actually sell okay. farm stuff. Okay. So it was, it was, like, it was like a farm okay, goods so store. Okay. Um, but you know, that's a good point, Joe. I, I don't. I don't know the answer to that one. I mean, a farmer has the right to repair his own equipment. But can somebody open a shop that just repairs farm equipment? I don't know. I don't know what the law says on that. Well, I think we should concentrate on the ones that have given us trouble. Roof line, yes. parking. Right. Uh, I, I, I agree. And but we need one com combined definitions to be able to comment on this stuff. Okay, because yeah. The existing definitions that we have, we put them in here. That's fine. Other definitions um, that we want defined, I mean, we definitely need building heights. I don't see that we even have a, you know, in yeah. the one where he's taken ours, there is no building related section. Correct. Correct. So yeah. do we accept this in in total and then just edit we'll, like we'll take out the mean and make it the highest you know. Th that the that's what we don't know. I mean yeah. So that's what we found with, with an earlier project to go through and um, reformat the zoning bylaw that, that <clears throat> when we actually got into doing, you know, taking things apart, and trying to put them back together in a more logical manner, <coughs> we found that there were a couple of things that just didn't make sense anymore. There things were overlooked. And um, so one of the questions was, do we, uh, do we fix it as part of, renumbering or fix it later. We decided to fix it later just to keep things simple. And I did send, I did copy both the building inspector and the um, conservation commission staff on uh, the definitions. I didn't hear back from either of them. So, um, I saw that you copied that. <clears throat> yeah, this th this could take a while because there are some things which are, you know, for example, you go to adult use and they have cabaret and we have cabaret and it's almost the first, it starts out almost word for word except the template 
where we say partial state of nudity, it says a partial state of nudity as defined under general law section, da, 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 you know, do we want to get that? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of picky mm -hmm. details to get into here. Right. Well, the good news is if we don't uh, have it ready to go for this fall town meeting, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. We want to make sure we get it close to correct before we jump into this. So th this is the first time we're really, really spending hard effort on this. So ask him to create a Hadley template. Yes. And then... Well, I'm just... Be before we even do that, I'm also... He's going to ask, what do you want to put in there that you don't have? So I'm kind of going through here. Like maybe he could put in suggested and highlight them so that we can then know these are what he's adding. Well, but I, th I think it's our responsibility to initially tell him we want to make sure you include these things. Mm. Okay. okay. Well, what Mark just said about cabaret, I think it's important that we use the state's definition rather than, rather than a Hadley definition. Well, we are using the state's definition. The problem is using the state's numbering. Because the um, um, we got into that when we were talking about um, chemicals allowed in the Aquifer Protection District and trying to key it into whatever section of the Code of Massachusetts regulations, mm -hmm. and it was getting tedious. It was getting tedious, and it was also one of those cross-reference yeah. things that if they change something, now you're talking about. Yeah, you, we started right. off talking about motor oil, but now we're talking about agricultural waste because they renumbered their You've code. Had a broken my, my, brain, thought, yeah. my thought is the, is the whole cabaret thing is more of a First Amendment issue, you know? And so if we start fill, fiddling around with that, somebody will say, well... Well, well people that. fiddle around with it all the time, but if you... The zoning bylaw is kind of written in an exclusive fashion. Nothing is allowed in the town of Hadley except, and it, you list the thing. So if somebody says, I want to open up a cabaret, well, a cabaret is not allowed in the town of Hadley. Somebody says, I want to put in a rocket launching pad for NASA. Where does that fit in, in our zoning? Right. Right. It doesn't because it is not allowed. Yeah. And the it's first not. paragraph is many... Most zoning bylaws are written that way because people play word games with you. So, just for background, the definitions in the template are already existing in the zoning bylaw, which means they have already been adopted by town meeting and approved by the attorney general. Now, that does not mean, to Mike's point, that if someone came in and wanted to fight for their right to have an adult cabaret that they couldn't, but they would be fighting both us and to some extent the, the state because our definitions are key to the state's definitions. What if someone came in that we didn't have an adult cabaret but we had something that could be considered adult, partial nudity, and we didn't define what that was? i.e. skimply clad people. We in have an adult entertainment district. Yeah. So yeah, there's something that you're thinking about the uh, the little little photo mat type huts with the bikini baristas, something like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm too pure. Uh, <laughs> well, apparently it's a California thing, but there are um, there. It's, Little uh, little roadside drive up uh, tiny structures where you can um, get your coffee on your way to work, and it will be served by someone who is lightly clad. Oh, California. Mm -hmm. Okay, it so do it doesn't work here when we're cold so much of the year. Yeah. So you're saying that some of the definitions in this one are already in our bylaw. Um, 
Well, there's some overlap. So, you know, there's an adult yeah. use section in here, and we have an adult use section, but the template definitions are a little different. And there are some definitions in the template that we don't have, like building height. Right. Um, so, okay. okay. Going to the section 20, the template. Everything that's in the section with this blue highlight, we already have in our zone bylaw. And that's been adopted and approved by town meeting and the attorney general. So really have no comments on that one. That's that one right there, right? This the one? No, this one. This one. Oh, okay. this one. Okay. The one with the orangey or brownish color highlight, I was just going through and marking things that we want to make sure when I tell Ken to put them in a combined use, combined that we include some things that we don't have defined. Some of them we do. So on the first page I highlighted accessory structure and accessory use as two things that we want to include. Okay. Um, under adult uses it seems like everything that's here we already have in our adult use, but we could kind of look at that down the road a little bit. On page two, I've got automobile repair shop and automobile service station as two things that we want to make sure we include. So I think both those words appear in our bylaw. People of uses, government, commercial, uh, business use, child care, automobile, service station, cleaning, repair shop, storage garage, or sales room. Okay, so we've got the automobile repair shop an automobile service that we don't use the word service station, do we? Uh, so yes. Automobile service, service, service station. Service station, repair shop. Let's we use both of those. Okay. Did you have sales in there too, Bill? Did you just read that? We did. And... He's not defining automobile sales. He's, he's not defining automobile sales. Somebody selling a car. Randy Eyes is selling a couple of cars. Well, that's basically if you've got a class one, a class two license, then you're selling cars. Yeah. But should we group it in that definition repairs, service, and sales? Yeah, it says the following terms relate to auto service and sales, but it doesn't have any terms actually. <coughs> Must apologize. My copies are right on the kitchen table that he didn't grab them. When I, you know. Mine got thrown away. It moved last week, and I don't know where I put them. Um, but these guys are doing a good job. Okay, he doesn't define new car sales. Indoor or outdoor sale and rental of motor vehicles, box truck, cargo van, motorcycle. Those are exclusions. Oh, but not including the rent. <coughs> junkyards. That's, oh. That that's comes under a repair shop that junkyards are not included. Yeah. That was a controversy in town for 30 years. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a note in there to define auto sales. New and used. Okay. All right. Um, under building related terms, I've got building, we want that building area, building height, and story. Ah. I think we wanted to find a half story because don't we have in our limits two and a half story buildings? Under the 
uh, someplace in there, Bill? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Do we divide it as like? Yes. Case? So we do want to keep half stories. We want to define a half story. We want to define building inspector. Probably, I think we mentioned it somewhere. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> then I'm going on to the next page. Where's the top of the page? Says vacate camp vacation. Um, if child care facilities is defined in master the laws, we do want to do we want to mention that or just leave it alone? This one. I uh, I'd say mention it. Mention it. Okay. Clearing. Do we use the word clearing anywhere in a bylaw? Like ground grubbing, clearing of trees, shrubs? No. I don't think we no. do. Was that an issue with the prior station up at the bridge? No. It that, was. It, w it was, but that had nothing to do with zoning. That was to do with uh, where they where they removed trees in a wetlands area. Mm -hmm. They cleared it. Club. I'm assuming we, we do mention club several times in our bylaws, so I'm assuming we yep. want to keep club in. Yep. Um, we want to define multifamily dwelling, I would think so. Could we use that? Dwelling detached and dwelling two family. I know we use those definitions. Group home? I don't think we we use group home on a bylaw. Uh, no, because it's sort of an exempt. Right. Um, family. We have never had an, uh, the three unrelated, the four unrelated persons bylaw. So I don't think we want to go there right now. Okay. I thought we did. We do. We we have more no more than five unrelated people. Uh, I thought it was four hundred four or five unrelated people. In um, it, it's some place in there, but it doesn't. But it doesn't use the word family. I think it had that had something to do with borders or something. I don't even think we should get into the definition of a family. I agree. Farm? Well, the purpose of that is to cut down on student housing. Is that the idea? Yes. Apartments? Yeah. Yes. Do we need to define farm? Because it's already under agriculture. We don't use the word farm, do we? Or I don't, I don't, think, so. I don't think so. No. Gross floor area? Um. That is incomplete because that gets into our um, how we define gross floor area. It does not include. Uh, let me see if I can just get in here for a second. It's in. It's how we define parking. Okay. And um, so. Um, Floor area is defined as gross square footage under cover as well as outdoor storage areas, outdoor display areas, outdoor seating, outdoor food service, and any other outdoor facilities related to the use. That one should be in our definition. Okay, so, so what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a note on there that we want that defined, but I put a note on there. See, what is it, 5.4.1? 5.4.1. Okay. That, okay. Was, that was the gross floor area? Correct. Yes. Um, that's kind of the echelon rule. Home plus. occupation? We already have home occupation. Yeah. That should be defined under home occupation, right? Well, they have candy making in there. Senior housing, adult use. Bed mm -hmm. breakfast, uh, senior housing. Solar. He doesn't have home occupation. Home occupation came in at the same time as bed and breakfast. Right. He's missing those two in here. 
Now he has bed and breakfast. Okay, yeah, right. But if he was doing it sort of in sequence... Yeah, all he's, all he's got for... Okay, yeah, he's missing. There's, all, there's a whole bunch... Well, where is the bylaw? Do we have definitions in home occupation? I thought we did. I've got my definition, my bylaw in the car. Sure. That's about like section get it. In, uh, 18 or something, I think. Home occupations. 20. Um, yeah, we do have definitions, but he may not have recognized them as definitions. Okay. Because the definitions are sort of integral to... It's buried into it. Yeah, it's really... <coughs> okay, so you can home occupate an activity conducted as a residential accessory use home occupations at by a resident within a dwelling for financial gain. A home occupation is in in incidental to and clearly subordinate to the residential use of the property. I'd say let's let's skip that one. Okay. But but C section uh, section twenty. So you're saying instead of having a written out definition, you would have a, just a reference referring to well, the uh, No, I think what we want to do is talk, think about, I think when he, when he was going through this, he was looking for you know, purpose definitions. He was looking for a definition section integral to the, the, sub, the section. Hmm. And in home occupation, um, you got home occupation, home office, and home business. And um, it is, so it's section 20.2.1, for example. Okay. Um, there is a definition embedded in there, in but, the home office. Okay. but it is, I mean, it's a very extensive definition. Yes. So it, I'm not sure it lends itself to be included in a standard definition section. No, it's a whole paragraph. Yeah, go and plus all of the sub ones. Yeah. Yeah. So part of the definition of home home office is that it should be conducted only by a bona fide resident of the house, no clients and customers, and then. It, throws in some other stuff like the zoning enforcement officer may charge a fee for registration, which is not part of the definition. So this one is, is this one would be hard to deconstruct to fit into definitions. I so think. would it make any sense to put that in our definition say, say home occupation and then say call and refer to section twenty uh, Yeah, I think that, that would that, be that, good. That might have to be done on those. Yeah. Because otherwise you're going to make the definition section right uh, two people. pages yeah yeah okay all right so the frontage the street frontage and the ground hotel is already in our other bylaw off space loading off street loading we don't have that lot related terms a lot at the bottom of the page mm -hmm. we don't have lot uh yeah i think we do have it in, in we have that table dimensional a lot 4.3.1 a lot a lot of parcel of land having the area of frontage of lesser. Okay, 4.3.1, Joe? Yes. Okay. All right. You know, the only report of the register. Blah, blah. Lot depth, lot frontage, lot line rear, lot line corner, lot front yard, rear yard, side yard. 
we got we got those all yeah. in four point three. Yeah, and minimum frontage and width. With, yeah. with, we do we define them, uh, or, or we do or we use the words. We just width use the words. Is defined. So yeah, we we use so like frontage is to be measured from the right of way line. Uh, yeah, lot frontage. Uh, but we don't define frontage. We, we don't just say we, we, just said, we tell you how to measure it. Yeah. So I think we want to keep. That's that's enough. Is it? I'm asking a question. I, I think we want to add these in as. Uh, we can always see what it looks like and take them out once we see them in, with a, in, in a solid unit. Okay. I don't think we have mobile residential. We we use mobile residential unit as the RV down by the river. Right. Not as a mobile home. Correct. Um, and I don't know if it has uh, designed to be connected to a water supply. No, I, I, I want to say out. That's out. Yeah. Motel. We don't use motel, do we? Or do we? Uh, I think we do have uh, in the table of uses. Residential, commercial retail, city of craft bank, personal hotel, motel, or restaurant. Okay. We want to. I want to say we wanted to find non-conforming use because we don't define it. We just call, call it. We just use the words, right? Yeah. Open space. I think we have that. I thought we did too. That might be in early in, in uh, site plan. Either uh, a site plan or in uh, the general regs. I think it's in the general regs. Accessory open space, uh, five point five. Okay. That space in a lot unoccupied by buildings. Or structures unobstructed to the sky. So that's actually for. So again, you know, we, we run into that's something I don't know if he picked it up, but um, Yeah, there are a lot of definitions embedded in here. Uh, let's see. Uh, so okay. he just has, you know, for example, he has one parking parking area, but yep. we also have off street parking shall be defined as, um, and um, open space is that space on a lot, which might as well say yeah. defined as. Um, a so parking area. He open space five point five. Is that space lot unoccupied by buildings or structures unobstructed to the sky? And yeah, that's what. So that first sentence is what he has in his template. But then we go on to say that it will not uh, include the uh, drainage ditches, ditches designated separate. wetlands. No parking area. They just got. Open space used for parking motor vehicles exclusively and in which no gasoline, fuel, or motor vehicle accessories are sold or no other business is conducted. We have a much different definition of parking. Yeah, so I'd say that's out. Premises? I don't think we use that. I don't either. Professional business office. Transaction of business business services exclusive of the receipt. So that's other than um, we have it in the it's an allowed use. Um, uh, under commercial retail, I think. Bank, business, or professional offices, but um, 
That's different than what we consider. But this says transaction of business provision of service is exclusive of, so this is awkward, exclusive of the receipt, sales, storage, or processing of merchandise, including but not limited to banks and financial institutions. Medical offices, medical clinics, and others. So is that included? I can't tell by reading it if that's included in business or professional office or excluded. Um, yeah, I agree. Okay, let's just leave that for now. I was going to put a question. Do you lead it? I, I, yeah. I, um, I think we need to define that. Yeah, I, okay, I. Maybe want to go through the bylaw in a different way. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Um, restaurant, a place where the primary function is serving of food and beverage. We use restaurants. Yep, I guess that'd be okay. We don't have women's house or sober house. Jim, you were right, it's four, not five. What? Uh, renting of rooms, furnishing, order period exceeding oh. 14 days in duration for not more than four persons in a dwelling regularly occupied for residential purposes. So okay. where is that? It's on the table under residential as we... What page? It's page four. But it's in the uh, table of uses. And you have agricultural and then it's under residential. Let's see what notes three and eight are. Yeah. Um, there. Yeah. But that's renting of rooms, furnishing of board. Um, so that's not a definition of a family. If I rent, yeah, forget I, family. I mean, I, that's yeah. froths with. But political okay. overtones. But th this doesn't actually address the. Um, this does not address renting a house to eight people. Renting of rooms. Okay, I'm not renting rooms. I'm renting the house. The lease is for 100 Middle Street, a <coughs> structure that will accommodate eight to ten people. Renting of rooms or I'm a renting, house? I'm renting, the, I'm renting a building. I, one lease may have ten people on the lease. I'm not renting rooms. I don't care where they sleep. I'm renting them a property. And I'm not furnishing board. So I can, I can squeeze as many people as I want in there. Nothing should be allowed, shall be used in any purpose or any <laughs> manner other than designated in a falling table. That's, that's the loophole here. A detached one family dwelling is permitted. I'm renting them my detached one family dwelling. Not the rooms, and I'm not cooking for them. So you, you're it, the lawyer, you're the wordsmith. Uh, it <laughs> does, yeah, well, I'm just saying that that does not address what people think, think it addresses. But that's when I would refer back to that exclusionary clause that most zoning bylaws had. Well, it doesn't if, say I if it said house rooms. You're living in the room. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 I think professional office or building. If you add the per, add the parentheses, I think it becomes clear. No. You disagree? Yeah. You, no, I maybe <laughs> only because when we put the when the zoning bylaw was written, professional services I believe professional and business office are two different definitions under our zoning bylaw okay um, I don't want to get into it right now because I have to get the, the whole bylaw in front of me but I think that okay. there's two different definitions here okay. but I'm not I'm not disagreeing with what you're trying no, to right, get across right. but, but they, going back they should be parsed I think I think they, should, they might need to be separated yeah. okay Last page, 
Okay, so there, his senior housing on the template, we 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 have our own. Right. So these are our sign. We have our own. We have, we've got the very first page of the other of the other sheet. We define sign differently. Street line. I don't think we use street line anywhere, do we? I don't think so. Street road or way, we do use that all over the place. Street line, I believe. That would be the property line, right? Is that, is that trying to delineate the right of way? Street line? Yeah, I, I think maybe we just go away. Yeah. Yeah, leave that. Leave street line in. Leave street. Uh, it, go, no, street line is out. Oh, it, it's okay. it doesn't really it's add anything. Street in a lot. It's not, it doesn't seem to be adding. Leave street. Leave street, and, leave street road or way in. I think so. Yes. Yes. Structure. Sure. Let's leave yeah, it in. That stays. Use. I guess that's okay. And he has only enforcement officer. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I will get this to Ken. So add add the selected ones. Yeah. Did we strike the independent living units and the you know, Yes, because yeah. those, are those, are, those are those are all be, be, because we have them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, on the, on the oh, the ones below we're going to take out sign because we already have sign defined. All right, so signs out and street lines out. Okay. Street lines out. Street or road or way is in. Structure is in. Use is in. And zoning or enforcement is in. Shopping center is out of any value. Which one? The one that's crossed out there. Shopping center. Um, I don't think so because we do. We don't the, use that definition. Yeah, we we would consider it under retail. Okay. Yeah, okay. and we, by definition, require on-site parking. So, adding that as a defining carrot, we require on-site parking for everything. Yeah. So that just doesn't fit into our. Uh, okay. Okay, I will get this to Kim. Jim, that thing that you were talking about, street line and frontage, is to be measured from the right of way where a plan is on file with a registry of deeds or in the absence of such a plan from a line 25 feet from the parallel with the center of the travel way. Where, which section is that? That's 4.3.2. In the case of a corner lot, the front yard depth shall be observed from right. all bordering okay. street. So we do define street line. Yes. We, do we call it street line? Well, we call it frontage. Frontage. But that is defined somewhere else in I here. I guess I thought we defined frontage someplace else. And this is uh, 25 feet because this is what Bill always refers to. This is not always a consistent. Right. The right of way varies. Exactly like, right. So on the size of And street. frontage sometimes is different on middle street. Than so there was uh, there is, was a definition that he crossed out frontage street, um, which is street um, okay. So so. I want to add a section, street frontage. It's also got lot frontage. Section 4.3.1, 4.3.2. Okay. All right. And key the blocks of 
like kind things yeah, to the uh yeah, I, 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 I section. Twenty point two for the home business and occupation. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. The key, the key for us as a board, is to recognize the problem as it faces us. For example, the roof line, mm -hmm. and then we should attack it rather than. Just is kind of like throwing everything against the wall and see what sticks. In True, me. but right. if we Think wait we, until, it, until it's in front of us, we can't apply it. Yeah, we we want to try to define where well, we, we can def we can define it the way we want to define it, and then we can write it down. Well, that's what we're trying to do yeah. here. We're, we're, we're trying to that's, we're not adopting any of these yet. We want to see what put these all together, and then go yeah. over them. You're right. And like I said, if it's not ready for fall. It's not the end of the world because mm -hmm. we want to make sure we don't adopt something that's. We want to make sure what we adopt is what we want to adopt. Okay, well, we have definitions already. That's pretty. That's different. But the new ones is what we want to make sure. You know, building height and stuff, like roof height, stuff but like that. This highlights another problem too that <clears throat> can miss a lot of definitions because they're sort of not worded as separate definitions even though they say x is defined right. as if we start pulling all of those out and putting them into the definition section we're going to leave a lot of holes in our numbering system mark the uh that paragraph mm -hmm. i was referring to is section three use regulations in 3.1 except as provided in blah 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 Nothing is allowed in the town of Hadley except, mm -hmm. and it we list them. So that's the exclusionary. So when people start playing yeah, word I, games, I know what you're saying. you get something like this. So now we now no longer have a 5.5, and uh, we. No, but it would be well, it would be we, it would be good to have that in the definition where you you don't have a definition, but you refer it to. Well, what we could do is you can leave the, the this highlight in, and then you could just simply put C, C definitions. C five point five. C definitions. C definitions. C definitions. Okay. okay if, if we do pull it out, I would not remove the words or the title, the section mm -hmm. title, but if we take this out or this out or whatever it might be. Leave the the leave five point five in with this title, and then just put C definitions. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's going to it's going to make a little bit of a mess. I don't disagree with you. And before we adopt it, we can I okay. can go through and modify one of these things. So the thing is, it's not like this was written as a novel. Yes. This general regulations are you know what. Uh, <clears throat> nine <clears throat> completely different things thrown right. together <clears throat> sort of miscellaneous yeah. um, so if one so if we either had open space with c section 5.5 in the definitions or move this to the definitions and said c definitions e yeah, either way it works yeah um, the other thing that i've done is i've gone through at least for our reference I've broken every section 1 through 31 or whatever we have into individuals so the numbering down below is now no longer page 22 it's 5.2 5 5.1 5 5 5 5 5.2 okay. section 6 is 6.1 6.2 because the numbering page Depending how everybody printed it out on their printer, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it changes. Yeah. And, it, and every time I add a, 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 a little, we, we add something to it, it got to be, I mean, the thing is a hundred and something pages long. It gets to be extremely tedious. Yeah, um, 111 at this point. That's before the marijuana. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's like 12 pages. Mm -hmm. Anyways. I, anyway. If I could just interject. Sure. 
I like the idea, if it's working for us now, leave, like, uh, what was the definition bill that you showed me that had like all these other things under it that was... Uh, home occupation. Home occupation. I like leaving that where it is, as it is, but also having a line in definitions that says home occupation, in case you hit that somewhere else, that says <coughs> C 5.5.4. Our intention is to use the definition, there's three major definitions in home occupation, home office, home occupation, and home business. We're going to put those three words in the definition section, C section 5.5, 5. just, yeah. like, just yeah. exactly like you said. Yeah. Because first of all, the definition of each of those is about a three quarters of a page. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to, Bill said, like you said, it's going to get very tedious yeah. to put that, that much stuff Right. In the definitions. Okay, we're in agreement. So that, so that helps someone when they hit the terms home occupation and they're not in that section. They'll go to definitions and they'll say, oh, go to that section, and then they'll get yeah. their answer. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Bill? Uh, yes, just a quick update okay. on the SWOT analysis. Oh, yeah. we, we had to get this into the administrator by, I think, last week. Last week. <clears throat> so, Strength, uh, so strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. That's what uh, SWAT means. Uh, we did it in August of 2015, and that is the top page. And then we did it again um, when I were reminded that they're looking for it. I did a quick edit last week of the 2015, and that is headed at the top, uh, effective 2019. Um, so there are some weaknesses that have actually been um, remedied. We have uh, um, we have limited clerical support now. We don't. We are not without clerical support. Um, and we do have direct access to the website now. What's this uncoordinated zoning advice across the department? Who's in charge? That was from the original. That was not a change. It, that we we get a. <laughs> some people get their zoning advice from the uh, assessor's office. Some get it from the building inspector. Some get it from us. Um, there isn't a... It's not a weakness. Yeah, it is a weakness. We aren't in it's control not, of it. It's not a weakness of the planning board. It's a weakness of, of the system. Of the system. People sometimes give the incorrect advice if they don't come to the planning board. Maybe it should be under threats. But the fact is that <clears throat> we, have, we have different opinions being expressed, and there's not a protocol for who talks to who. Uh, the permitting is getting a little more coordinated too. So, um, you know, there are there have been some the the weaknesses have been paired. Uh, the strengths are pretty much um, unchanged. The opportunities we have done the master plan update. Um, we still can do the uh, development team that's sort of underway, but and. Um, <coughs> A permitting guide and the threats are pretty much unchanged. We uh, we're still heavily reliant on Jim and me. Managing the learning curve that's that's a tough one. I mean, there's a lot to learn in this, um, and that might be a, a um, again that could could as well be a weakness as a threat. Mm -hmm. It is just part of the. It's part of the system. Yeah. Um, it's part of the structure. Well, you could look at it from a positive <coughs> point of view. We're getting fresh ideas and fresh faces and new opinions. Yeah. Well, we 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 do have two relatively relatively new members. Yeah. And uh, and they bring a lot to the table. Their comments, different skill sets. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that's listed under strength. Uh, not tonight, I didn't apologize for not uh, being more involved in this. Uh, well, it's, 
If you're thrown into the fray, you could do it. So I, you know, I put it under dedication, low absenteeism, uh, town government experience, geographical distribution. Um, yeah, we could add, uh, um, I have shared vision of planning board objectives, but I'd be happy to add uh, different viewpoints. Okay. Well, Mark, way back when, I ran against the incumbent 45 years ago. My first meeting, they elected me chairman and they wouldn't do anything, so I had to do everything. So that was kind of a baptism of fire. But, uh, but then you could well, see where I said where we needed strength. We needed an engineer, we needed a lawyer, we needed somebody to help us out in those technical areas. Who did you run against? Pardon? Who was your opponent? John Lipsky. Still alive, isn't he? No, that was no, his father. That was his father. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that, he'd be, he'd be, he'd be a hundred. He'd be a hundred and something. I saw John Lusky getting an ice cream cone there. Down okay, that's his son. All right, uh, so, so I digress. Uh, so um, that's that's where we are at yep, looks the good. moment. Good job. Well, thank you for not appointing me chairman and, and not supporting yes. me. Well, I mean, Jim and Well, Bill. when, when uh, the roles have been expanded. A, 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 a little bit of a, di a different comment. When Joe was uh, got elected to the planning board, the zoning bylaw book was about eight pages. And the little book that I don't have it. That was a zoning bylaw book when Joe was elected. Mm. Okay. And it's not like the writing was tiny. It's probably like a number eight font, mm. a 10 font. Today, like we just said, it's 100 and actually about 100, over 120 pages. And most of those, some of those were reactions, some of those were um, proactive. Oh, but. Anyways, and you know, sometimes you get into a reactive thing like the uh, home occupations and the bed and breakfast uh, because there were some people pushing the envelope and um, zoning, building inspector needed something to rely on and then we haven't had any, any, uh, anything in that field for years now. Yeah, yeah. We all, they're, they're trying to push people are trying to push B and B and Airbnbs and are getting caught all over the place with that. And some of the biggest controversies we could never settle a fence. What's the difference between a farmer's fence and the fence around your swimming pool and a spike fence and yeah. And the other one is uh, the building code has also yeah. addressed a lot of those issues. Yes. When we when we when I first got on, there was no building code on putting a fence around an in-ground swimming pool. So there was a zoning bylaw. There was we put it we put it, we put it in our zoning bylaw that I think we can take out because the building code now addresses fences around in-ground pools and even something that necessarily is certain above ground pools. They also address spike fences and everything else. A so, spite fence is when you put it right on, right up against your neighbor or something? A spite fence, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, Tim could give a better idea. But a, a, a fence can go pretty much right up to the edge of your property line or right on the property line if your neighbor agrees. If the fence is over a certain height, or a certain height, I don't know if it's five or six feet, mm -hmm. it's considered a spite fence. But if you get your neighbor to agree that yes, that's okay, so that this neighbor and this neighbor, the fence goes down in the middle, then you can put up a fence, you know, higher, as long as they both agree to it. And you see a lot of those around because, yeah, it looks nice, and if it's a nice looking fence, it's okay. The, the neighbor put up a fence between myself and the neighbor took down a hedge a year ago. It was getting overgrown and trees were dying, et cetera, et cetera. So then she said she wanted to put up a fence and she wanted to put up six feet. I said, you may need my permission because it might be considered a spike fence. Check with the building inspectors. I have no problem with a six foot fence. And, you know, put it up and no problem and it looks nice. 
looks like an even taller than that across from the elementary school. What that is. Um, yeah, I don't know yeah. what's up there. Um, yeah. That's a actually in a limited business district, which <laughs> may be slightly different. Than yeah. What was the issue, was it a couple of years ago, about the, uh, t the tiny house? Lady on East Street built a 190 square foot house and it was a detached house on the property um, didn't have running water and it didn't have its own sept septic system and it was a detached house it, it was on a trailer it was, it was a trailer, trailer. Oh, exactly. trailer. right trailer. it was a trailer okay. and uh well, the issue was it was also so that she went for a zone change to have it permitted. Town meeting turned it down because it's not a permitted use. And I, I want to say within certainly within two months after it was voted down, the trailer was moved out. It was also Mount Holyoke College to, to put it up. No, trailer. she was Hampshire. No, yeah. she was Mount Holyoke. Mount Holyoke? Mount Holyoke? Mount Holyoke. It was part of a, uh, a senior thesis or senior something. Thesis, yeah. 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 So. so uh, <clears throat> I thought it was same sure it was good. Thank you for correcting. So that was a situation where the uh, she had been calling around to various towns and was being told no, no, and she talked to our building inspector who said, well, it's not specifically prohibited, um, mm. but to Joe's point, neither is it specifically allowed. But we didn't have a definition of what a minimum size of, is for a house. Um, but we did have a no trailers um, or no mobile homes clause. If the building code there was no septic no, system. That's not that's not true. Under such I forgot where it is, but I don't think it's Sac Chapter Forty. But zoning cannot dictate a minimum size house. That's considered snub sure. or yeah. maximum yeah. size or maximum size. Right. Right. There is a. Uh, I think Tim could answer this better, but there's like a roundabout definition of what a minimum size house can be, because you're going to have certain bathroom, bedroom, and cooking facilities, and you could kind of, I think they give you minimum square foot for some of those, and so you can kind of determine from that at least what a minimum size house could be, and I couldn't have any idea to tell you what it would be. So it's a combination of the building code and the sanitary code, right. as okay. to how much space you have to have per person. Gotcha. Um, but some people would like to push that on the downside, say, I don't need that much space. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, yeah, it, it, it actually segued into a discussion about maybe allowing accessory apartments as detached as opposed to requiring that they be that was the basis of her bylaw that she was proposing an accessory apartment that was not attached to the primary dwelling and that didn't fly with town meeting oh just a, as a piece of extra advice we do have a note from the town admin from david nixon that megan's way has been resubmitted to be accepted as a town way. It's been brought to my attention, speaking of subdivision regulation. Wait a minute. Hold that, Charlie. You can speak in a minute. Do we have any reason why that shouldn't be a town road? Um, Do we have the as-built plan? Supposedly, Tim, um, Randy has an as-built. We should have it and see it before <coughs> Do we have an ask built of Megan's? Right? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's review. I don't think we have to. Ch um, I will pull what I have on what we have to do. Okay. For our next meeting. Okay. And we can discuss that under planning board procedures. Okay. If we have to take a vote on it, we'll put it on a future agenda. Okay. I know there is, there, there's a series of steps we have to take and um, 
there's that uh, that guy who used to work for I guess, I'm sure he's retired long since uh, executive office of communities and development you used to have his yes. number memorized yes yes oh. he did I used to do well oh. in the city. Uh, oh, oh the zoning handbook uh, he, yeah. he, he wrote he, he was, was the guru. guru he was a guru yes okay Okay. Um, All right. Okay. Um, I have nothing else. I have nothing else. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meetings, history, thank you, and thank you, John. Okay.